Hi, welcome back to Crushing Comics, the show where I fall in love with my comic collection all over again. Behind me on this wall uh, are all of my oversized comic books, omnibuses, OHCs, and absolutes. And because I didn't get to do unboxing videos with them for the first time, now that they've just gone through a major international move, I'm doing unboxing videos with them now. Let's see what our lucky victim is today. Let's do this one. This must have been the first one I wrapped because as you can note, all the other ones have bubble on the outside, but this one has paper on the outside and I guess bubble on the inside. Um, there wasn't a lot of like egg drop tests about what was gonna be more effective to wrap them in. It was just like, oh my gosh, the movers are getting closer to this room. I better get these books wrapped up. Movers, so our movers, I had many qualms with, but here's the thing. They're there to put away things that they've seen CDs, they know how to put away. DVDs, they know how to put away. Lamps, terrific. Couches, wonderful. But as you get to the more unusual stuff, um, they don't know really what to do with it. So I own some guitars and they were like, I don't even know what kind of box to put that in. Can it go upside down? I'm like, no, don't turn it upside down. Doesn't need support. Like I, I they had no idea. Um, microphones, so I have all my music equipment. I had to like coach them on how to wrap up. And then the comic books, they're just like, it's just books, right? And I'm watching them put these books into other books. I'm like, ah! like, and they put dents in books that I love, um, but they weren't comic books. So I tried not to freak out about it too much. I am somebody, if you can tell by the amount of plastic wrap on the shelf behind me, who really likes to keep my things nice. And so I was like, how are we gonna keep these comic books nice? through the packing process when they will just throw any which thing in any which box and then through the shipping process too. And so I decided the way that that would best be is I would just turn each of these books basically into a widget. I would make it just like an interchangeable little thing, like some little kitchen tray that they didn't have to pay any kind of special attention to. And they could just throw into a box and it would be fine. This was the first one. I remember doing this in the middle of the night. All right, oh, this is a good one. So this is The Hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, volume three. I think we're gonna open this. And it's the direct market cover, the classic cover. So, okay, Shang-Chi. So Marvel dropped a really big piece of news at a retailer breakfast in, was it fall of 2016? Gosh, I, don't, I can't remember if it was 15 or 16. They were going to do a six volume omnibus set of Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi occupies an unusual place in the Marvel canon because he's based on a licensed universe, the Sax Romer Fu Manchu universe, which Marvel had acquired the rights to do stories about in the early 70s because of the Kung Fu craze. Bruce Lee was huge and Marvel was really doing well with themed magazines and licensed material at that time. And they thought, let's get into this. And so they licensed him, but instead of just writing Fu Manchu stories, Marvel did as they did with many of their licensed properties in the 70s and 80s. They built an entire universe around the license new characters, new stories, and they let it tie in with the Marvel Universe. So early Shang-Chi has like Iron Fist in it, um, or at least he's part of the same universe as Shang-Chi. And at, over time, it became a really fascinating example of the outgrowth of this existing universe. Marvel did a similar thing with Star Wars. They did a similar thing with G.I. Joe, with Rom, famously, who crossed over with like every possible um, superhero. But the problem with all these things is licenses expire. So when you have a license to a universe, eventually you stop paying the license and you aren't able to write stories or reprint stories anymore. So we got faced with this happening that there's 125 issues of this comic book and Marvel couldn't really reprint them and to an extent couldn't even reference the stories wholly because it couldn't reference the Fu Manchu aspects. And so they were kind of locked out of making good use of the Shang-Chi and he became very, very sparse in his appearances. But Marvel got the license rights back for the reprints and so we got this beautiful, beautiful book. Now I have read the first one. People are a little split. A lot of people leapt out to buy these. Oh, they have letter pages. I love when I have letter pages. 
um, people leapt out to buy the first one because they just had heard about it for so long and it was one of those comics that you couldn't really acquire unless you went super back issue hunting. Look at this little diagram. That's cool. And, um, and they got the first one and they found out they didn't really dig it. Which I understand, you don't have to dig everything. Shang-Chi is an interesting combination of like a kung fu book, but also a, um, also like almost like a spy adventure book too. And he's not always doing kung fu. Like I just opened uh, up to a page of him fighting robots, which is not traditional kung fu either. So um, probably those of you who are big, big omnibus fans are like super wincing that I just picked up a book and I opened it straight down the middle without relaxing the covers. I have to be careful about that as we are um, doing this crushing comics thing. And I'm opening up some brand new books. You're supposed to like ease your way into them. And I did the totally wrong thing. Over time, it'll relax. But also, I probably opened it really to its natural center point. too. So, uh, But yeah, there is a how to open a book thing. It's not just for obsessives. It's like if you're like a librarian who's like handling older books that don't get opened a lot, you want to relax the spine so the book can open up nicely. Um, something interesting about this, actually, before I sign off. Look at the creator's page. There's only two names. Doug Moch, who wrote all the series from the midpoint to the end, I believe. And Mike Zack, classic Marvel illustrator, who did this whole omnibus. Like, that's not really common even for classic material, let alone Marvel modern material. This is issue 71 to 101, and uh, Zack illustrated just about every single one of those 30 issues. So that's awesome. I really look forward to having all four of these. The last volume, I think, is maybe on its way to me here in New Zealand right now. It takes like five weeks. And I will absolutely be sitting down and reading them. Maybe not all in like one weekend, but as an ongoing project. And maybe I'll talk about that. So uh, time for the official ceremonial shelving. Because of course I'll have to put all these in better order once I free up a whole shelf. I don't even think it's going to fit on this one. I think we're going to start a new shelf. Let's put it up here. All right, Shang-Chi, welcome to the collection. Thank you so much for watching Crushing Comics. And I'll be back next time to unwrap more of my collection.